Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, you can see my lecture or, uh, on the topic macro and micro elements, their deficiencies and uh, imbalances in livestock species. Actually, I have uh, divided this lecture into basically two parts. First uh, part comprises of the introduction of macro and micro elements. And the second portion uh, describes different uh, deficiencies and imbalances in livestock species, especially the large ruminants and small ruminants. Um, and if possible, I would also be covering uh, these deficiencies and imbalances in poultry, poultry birds. So then uh, let's start with the uh, what I would be covering uh, today, uh, it's uh, here. Uh, minerals actually are inorganic substances which are present in all body tissues and fluids. And their presence is uh, necessary for the maintenance of certain physico-chemical processes which are essential to life. Minerals are chemically uh, chemical constituents uh, which are used by the body in, in, in many different ways. Although they yield no energy, they have important roles to play in many activities of the body. Every form of living matter, it requires these inorganic elements or minerals for their normal life processes. Um, <clears throat> there are actually... Um, 40 inorganic elements which are found to exist in various parts of the animal. And out of these, 14 elements have been observed to have specific function in animal body. And uh, the metabolic roles of the rest um, is still not fully established. So if we, I mean, see uh, the classification of these minerals, so minerals may be broadly classified as macro or major minerals, um, micro, that is trace animal, uh, minerals, and the third category is ultra trace elements. <clears throat> the macro minerals uh, include calcium, phosphorus, sodium, and chloride, while the micro elements, they include iron, uh, copper, cobalt, potassium, magnesium, iodine, zinc, manganese, molybdenum, fluoride, chromium, selenium, and sulfur. So the macro minerals actually they are required in amounts which are greater than 100 milligram per deciliter. And micro minerals are required in amounts which are less than 100 milligram per deciliter. Uh, the ultra trace elements include boron, silicon, arsenic, and nickel, which have been found in animals and are believed to be essential for these animals. Uh, evidence for uh, requirements and essentialness of others like cadmium, lead, tin, lithium, and vanadium, it's a bit weak. Um, mineral elements, they are separate entities from uh, the other essential nutrients like proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and vitamins. Animal husbandry had demonstrated the need for minerals in the diet. Uh, <clears throat> micronutrient uh, deficiencies are a major public health problem in many uh, developing countries. Uh, I'm talking about human beings with infants and pregnant women, especially uh, they are at, at, at risk. Uh, <clears throat> here, let's go to um, the different uh, uh, functions of minerals uh, so that we should understand, we, we would be able to understand uh, their utility, their, uh, I mean, functions in the body. <clears throat> minerals, they perform four broad types of function in animals. The first one is structural. 
minerals can form structural components of body organs and tissues, exemplified by minerals such as calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, silicon in bones and teeth, and phosphorus and sulfur in muscle proteins. Minerals such as zinc and phosphorus can also contribute structural stability to the molecules and membranes of which they are a part. So that was about the structural function of, of, of minerals in the animal body. Second uh, function, which is very important also, is physiological function. Minerals, they occur in body fluids and tissues as electrolytes to concern with the maintenance of osmotic pressure, acid-base balance, membrane permeability, and the uh, transmission of nerve impulses. Uh, for this, uh, sodium, potassium, chlorine, calcium, and magnesium in the blood, uh, you know, cerebrospinal fluid and gastric fluid, they, all pro uh, they provide examples of, of, of such functions. Of, uh, I mean, they are involved in physiological uh, functions of the body. <clears throat> then comes uh, catalytic function. Um, it's very important. To, I mean, uh, they are a part of uh, most of the enzymatic reactions um, in uh, endocrine systems. They can act as a catalyst in enzyme and endocrine systems, as integral and specific components of the structure of uh, metalloenzymes and hormones, or as activators, like, I mean, we call it coenzymes, within those systems. The number and variety of metalloenzymes and coenzymes identified um, is uh, increasing day by day. The, the activities, these activities may be anabolic or catabolic, life enhancing, that is oxidant. Uh, if, if, if these minerals or elements, they act as oxidant, or life protecting, uh, like antioxidants, in case of antioxidants. The fourth and last, I mean, <clears throat> type of function is, uh, is regulatory function uh, in the body. Uh, minerals, they regulate cell replication and differentiation. For example, um, if we talk about calcium, uh, calcium ions, they influence signal transduction and uh, selenocysteine influences gene transcription, uh, leading to its uh, nomination as the 21st amino uh, amino, uh, amino, amino acid. <clears throat> the, the pivotal metabolic role of thyroxine has been attributed to the influence of triiodothyronine, thyronine on gene transcription. And uh, I mean, uh, another uh, metalloenzyme or copper is an essential constituent of the growing number of coproenzymes and coproproteins with functions as diverse as electron transfer, like as a cytochrome oxidase, iron absorption as a um, hepherstein and oxygen defense. Uh, these, uh, I mean, were a broad types of, uh, or the functions of, uh, of, of these uh, different minerals, whether the, these are uh, macro minerals, micro minerals, or uh, um, ultra trace elements. Let's talk about um, different uh, minerals. Uh, I mean, with their functions and importance and their sources in animals, uh, so that we could understand their uh, complete role. So I would, I mean. Um, I would be uh, giving you a brief description of uh, some of the major or minor um, minerals uh, so that I could highlight the importance of these minerals in animals' body in performing different uh, physicochemical, uh, phys physiological functions of the body. Uh, one of which is uh, uh, macro or major minerals is calcium. Its atomic weight is, uh, is 40 and it's present uh, in bodies, especially the skeleton and teeth in large amounts than any other cations. Skeleton contain 99% of calcium. 
So what are different sources of uh, calcium? Um, it includes wheat, cereals, vegetables, milk, chana, fish meal, oyster shell, limestone, dicalcium phosphate, uh, bone meal, etc. etc. And uh, there, here are uh, the different uh, functions of calcium, uh, like uh, it is required for growth, bone formation, blood clotting, and eggshell formation, especially in poultry. But um, calcium also regulates the heart beat and working on uh, muscles. It maintains acid base balance and it controls the irritability of uh, neuromuscular systems. After calcium, uh, I would be talking about phosphorus and it's some atomic weight is, is, is I think 31. Phosphorus is found in every cell of the body, but most of it, it's about 80% uh, of the total is combined with calcium in bones and teeth. So a uh, majority of the body reservoirs of uh, phosphorus are, uh, in are present in combination with the calcium and uh, more than uh, or about 80% of the total, uh, I mean, their quantity or concentration in the body is mostly uh, present in bones and teeth. So what are the uh, different uh, sources for uh, <clears throat> phosphorus? Uh, like uh, uh, meat, soya bean, fish meal, meat meal, dicalcium phosphate, steamed bone meal, phosphoric acid, monosodium phosphate, um, the defluorinate phosphate, etc. So now let's talk about the functions or importance of phosphorus. Uh, major in, uh, it has a role of bone and teeth formation, uh, like we know about calcium. It's a component of all living cells, uh, regulates the metabolism of carbohydrates and fats. It maintains the acid ba base balance of the body and calcium transport in egg formation. Uh, so these two, uh, I would, uh, I mean, the rest sodium, I mean, potassium, uh, um, magnesium, and uh, chlorine and sulfur. Uh, I would be providing the handouts or, or give you the reference for reading their uh, importance, their sources um, about these details. <clears throat> Let's come to uh, micro minerals or trace minerals uh, directly. And the first one uh, micro mineral is uh, manganese. Its atomic weight is 55. Um, uh, it's uh, an essential element in, uh, in nutrition. There are different uh, sources for uh, manganese, <clears throat> like rice, wheat bran, alfalfa meal, grain byproducts, distilled soluble, and in practice, poultry feed is always supplement, supplemented to inorganic sources like manganese sulfate, manganese chloride, uh, manganese uh, carbonate, etc., etc. So these are different sources of uh, uh, manganese in, in animals. Uh, if we talk about function and importance of manganese, we can say that it's also necessary for growth, bone formation and reproduction especially uh, for a reproduction. Manganese in, is involved with several enzymes like organase, cysteine, these, uh, the uh, sulfate rays, etc. Uh, it is also related with amino acids transport across the gut. Then comes iron. Its molecular weight, uh, sorry, atomic weight is 56. A major protein of body um, iron is present in the hemoglobin of the blood. Uh, there are different sources for iron, like meat meal, liver meal, fish meal, green fodder, peri cup of cereal grains, rice bran, wheat bran, cotton seed cake, linseed cake, alfalfa alpha meal, etc. And I would add a little bit that uh, most of the meals are uh, are uh, from I mean uh, different parts meat uh, meals. They are a major source of uh, iron too for the body. And about function, it is necessary for the formation of hemoglobin, an iron containing compound which enables the blood to carry oxygen. And it's a very, very major function of this, uh, I mean, iron. Then iron is also important for maintenance of uh, oxidative enzyme system within the tissue cells.
third micro mineral or trace mineral is copper its atomic weight is 64 and it is it's also necessary for hemoglobin formation uh, there are different sources of copper like liver and glandular meal dried whey peanut meal fish meal cotton seed meal etc uh, in poultry feed uh, copper sulfate, copper carbonate, and copper oxide are about equally effective. And if we talk about function and importance of copper, it's necessary for synthesizing hemoglobin and preventing nutritional anemia. Uh, and it's also an essential element in a number of enzyme systems. The relation of copper with the growth of bone is not worthy. There are some other micro or trace minerals like iodine, um, zinc, cobalt, um, selenium. So let's talk about selenium. Selenium, its atomic weight is 79, and it, it, it was reported in 1957 as an essential element at low levels, despite its toxicity in large intake. I mean, if, if, if it is taken in large uh, doses, it, it is toxic for the body, especially it causes toxicity in the liver. Uh, different sources for selenium are fish meat, brewers, dried yeast. Um, in poultry, we uh, feed, uh, the feed is supplemented to sodium selenide or sodium selenate. Functions and importance of selenium, it is involved in vitamin E absorption or retention. Selenium plays primary role in the prevention of exudative diseases in chicken. Uh, selenium is also involved in the description of uh, peroxides within the cell um, as a constituent of uh, glutathione peroxidase, and it's an enzyme which is uh, I mean, produced um, as, a, uh, as, a anti uh, as a response to antioxidant, uh, antioxidant substances. Selenium has also been reported to reduce the incidence of uh, encephalomalacia in chicks. So these are I mean, different uh, roles of different minerals in different livestock species. Uh, that was my first part. Uh, thank you for listening to uh, this part. Thank you very much.